talking more about that and having a sustainable brand and the importance of upcycling. Um, Isabel's really been able to A, make really cool clothes, but they're also sustainable and an inclusive brand thanks to their genderless clothing, zero waste facility and carbon neutral shipping. Altered perception clothing has really changed the way we're able to think about both our shopping habits and relationship with clothes. And I feel like it's really inspired people to get more into sustainable clothing and lifestyle. So we're very excited to have you. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. That was so nice. <laughs> yes. Um, share your screen. Let me know if you have any trouble with that. Yes, I am uh, very unprepared right now. I had my time mixed up. I'm so sorry. I am pulling it up right now. All right, let's see. All right, can, is it looking good? Okay, okay great. So, um, as Sophie said, my name is Isabel Liebwein and I am the person behind Altered Perception Clothing. So that's me. I didn't know if we would, we were on Zoom or not. So I put some pictures of me. That's me, Isabel. I am 21 and in college and also have a full-time job, but I just very much feel passionately about sustainability. So I decided to start my business. And so just so you have some more background on me, I want to tell you guys about what I actually sell. And so I make clothing and accessories that follow these five principles. So colorful, inclusive, genderless, weird, and sustainable. And with marketing clothing as sustainable, big air quotes around that, there's a ton of variability on what businesses mean by that. So I'm gonna tell you exactly how my clothing is sustainable. All of this, I decided to set all of these standards for my business and wanted to make my business somewhat of a standard for what businesses should all be doing in my opinion. First is I have a zero waste facility. My facility is in my home, but anything that goes into my business or is bought to be used for my business. Nothing goes into landfills. It's all either recycled or is reused. Next, I make majority of all my clothing from waste, discarded waste. And so this number is actually outdated. It's up over 400 pounds of waste saved from landfills by recycling everything. In my opinion, there's no need for new clothing or new materials at the moment. There's already so much being thrown away and I'll talk about that next. Next, I make sure to make my sizes inclusive, two extra small to five extra large, as well as all clothing being genderless. I also do carbon neutral shipping. So all of the carbon emitted from your individual order will actually be offset by funding, protecting forests, planting seedlings, protecting those seedlings, and therefore offsetting that carbon amount. In addition, something I'm still working on getting the word out a little bit is circular fashion. All clothing comes with a lifetime warranty for them to be mended, upcycled, or sent back. Let's see. So first, why is fast fashion bad? What is fast fashion? Because that is the main issue that I'm trying to go against. So I have a little quote from Good On You. It's that fast fashion can be defined as cheap, trendy clothing that samples ideas from the catwalk or celebrity culture and turns them into garments in high street stores at breakneck speed. And so if you've ever seen 
trends really take off and then all of a sudden Sheen, Boohoo, Forever 21, all of those stores have similar styles like for example the tie-dye sweat sets. That's an example of fast fashion but in order to do this one of the main issues is they have to exploit workers to achieve such low prices and pump out clothing as quickly as possible. In addition to that, fast fashion clothing creates large amount of waste. It's typically produced in countries with little to no pollution laws that comes with little to no labor regulation, making it cheaper to dispose of waste and causes billions of tons of pollution annually through fabric scrap, CO2 emissions, and polluted wastewater that are just being dumped into oceans because there aren't regulations in majority of the countries that these clothings are being produced at. Oh. In addition with fast fashion, creating a bunch of waste is the overconsumption of fashion because with styles coming out weekly and no longer correlating with the seasons like they used to, new items coming out all the time, it pushes overconsumption and the need for new clothes which then have to be disposed of and the cycle continues. And finally, in addition, fast fashion companies are notorious for stealing smaller brand designs ideas. And it's even worse for um, typically black designers and black indigenous people of color. For some reason, they really go after them too specifically. There's whole movements about why they do that specifically to them. And it's just awful how much they steal from small designers and exploit ghost designers as well. So that's another big issue. And at the bottom, it talks about promoting overconsumption. So these are all reasons why you shouldn't shop at fast fashion stores. Again, those are Forever 21, Boohoo, Sheen, Urban Outfitters, Zara, H&M. Those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Now with people wanting to be able to shop more sustainably, there's this new thing called greenwashing. And so this is a little graphic in the middle I made and the definition is the process of conveying a false impression or providing misleading information about how a company's products are more environmentally sound. So around the little graphic are more graphics like the one that says bio or eco-friendly product, earth-friendly, and tons of companies are doing this. They've made their packaging green, they've written earth friendly when there is absolutely nothing friendly about the product. I think some of the big ones are when it'll say sustainable crew neck and then you look and it's all made out of new materials, nothing's recycled and it's plastic. So the big thing with greenwashing is really looking out and reading about the company that you're buying from. And I have a whole blog on that. So not, I won't go crazy into it, but there will be option for questions after. Oh, just kidding, that's it. <laughs> what is it? Yes, so that's my whole presentation, basically about what I do, why I don't enjoy fast fashion, greenwashing. And so I wanted to leave the rest of the time up for everyone to ask questions. And I have a few example questions right there. Sorry, I really flew through that. No, that was great. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to open this to questions. Um, Beck and I have a few that we'll start kind of diving into. But at any point, if anyone wants to drop anything in the chat or just raise your hand, feel free. Um, I guess for starters, because you really are taking a lot on as a small business by being so eco-friendly, I'm just curious, like, what's been the most difficult aspect of running a zero waste facility and such a sustainable brand? So I think at first it was a really big learning curve specifically with zero waste because when I'd buy a product, I didn't really think about what it was packaged in when I purchased it for my business. And then I'd get the item that I wanted to use for my business and I'd have all this packaging. It's like, oh, now I have to figure out if it's recyclable. If it's not recyclable, I have to figure out a way to reuse it and put it back 
into new items. So that was just a big learning curve in realizing how much is intended to be single use and disposed of. In addition, running a sustainable business isn't easy. Um, if, for example, a people think that thrifted clothing or secondhand clothing, because I'm getting my stock secondhand, would be cheap, but it's not in comparison for a white t-shirt that a fast fashion company can get for cents. I have to pay five or six dollars, which five or six dollars compared to a brand new shirt sure is very cheap, but that's because it's there was no labor put behind the shirt for the company to sell. There was labor put behind the shirt for a fast fashion company and it's significantly cheaper to use new materials in comparison to a shirt made out of 100% recycled cotton. A blank one could be $30 in comparison to a shirt that's cents. So that's just the big thing is trying to leverage profit and actually make my business something that I can do for a while <laughs> and not lose money on it is I think the most difficult part. That's awesome. And kind of basically going off of um, how you mentioned thrift stores, do you have an opinion on like people who buy clothing from thrift stores, but then they go to like apps like Depop or Poshmark and like price it up? Cause I've seen that a lot. Um, that's kind of like a trend happening where a lot of um, just like people in Gen Z would do that. What are your opinions on that? So there's a ton of controversy around this topic. And so to kind of avoid that, my secondhand materials come from thrift store outlets. If you've heard of the blue bins, everything that has served its shelf life at the thrift store has already had the opportunity for people who go to thrift stores first due to financial needs to buy their clothing. They've already had the opportunity to see the item. That's where I come in right before it's shipped off to a country in foreign country or it's thrown away or burnt. So <laughs> that's where I get mine. And that's definitely where I recommend everyone do that because I have firsthand seen prices rise in thrift stores that I frequented going from a wedding dress, for example, being $2 to now being $100 at the same thrift store. And I can't say, and this is, this is in Flint, Michigan. And so I can't say if that is due to thrift store gentrification, or if it's just natural increase of prices, that's very much for only a few years. But thrift store gentrification comes from the idea that when people go in and just buy a bunch of product that to then sell themselves, that's creating increased demand, which will then raise the thrift store prices, which then puts people who are going there as their first option at a disadvantage for nicer items addition to those people going into the stores and buying all the nice items out. So my rules of thumb for thrifting are first, don't go through shopping in a low income community. Then when you do go through shopping, if thrift shopping is not your necessary price range, um, don't buy socks, hats, coats, or underwear. Never buy those from a thrift store if you can get them somewhere else. Preferably, you should get them from a sustainable company, <laughs> but if you can buy those items somewhere else, do that because the people going to thrift stores very much need those items. Um, my opinion more on people going in and buying out is I think it's fine if they're doing it responsibly in that sense, not buying items that are of the best quality in the whole store. Um, I think there just needs to be a lot of balance and make sure they're not going into areas that that's where everyone's shopping type deal. Definitely. Yeah. I know that's been like an ongoing debate, but especially I've seen a lot of memes with the Depop stuff, but it's actually like a serious explained <laughs> 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 very well. Um, I guess shifting to the more like actual brands and not necessarily fast fashion brands, but the like mid mid group, you know, where they're not overly sustainable, but they're not fast fashion. How would you like to see more brands like that make efforts to be more sustainable? I think um, a really big, 
a, a different thing that um, I think is not, I didn't even realize for a while is that, so there are fast, clear fast fashion brands that are selling their items for like $2, between two and $20, you know? And then people would assume that places like Urban Outfitters isn't fast fashion because it has a high price point, but they're still using all the same labor and still using all the same wholesale suppliers as these fast fashion industries, they've just increased their price point due to their brand name. And so I think that's something to look out for because just because something has a higher price point doesn't mean it's not fast fashion, doesn't mean they're not using child labor and doing mass pollution. I think that those companies, especially because they have that high pr price point, they have room to give and to choose more expensive, more sustainable materials that should already be reflected in the quality of their garment if they're selling it at that higher price point, if this makes sense. Yeah, totally. Um, can you take us through your process like once you've received a custom order? Yes. So when I get an email of someone wanting a custom order first, got to determine if they're wanting to send me an item or if they want me to find an item for them. And Leah, I will get to your question in a second. Um, and so d depending on that, if they send me in their item, that's always way simpler because I don't have to find something super specific like um, a, a pink bomber jacket, which I can do, can find online secondhand, but <laughs> if they send me their item, I think that's always more personal. Um, and then a lot of times it's just, they don't exactly know what they want. And so it's throwing back concepts and ideas. And sometimes I'll create mood boards for them and then sketch out designs and show them the potential product I'm going to get for them to then customize. And it's a really personal in-depth process up until sending pictures right before I ship it out. That's so fun. I feel like it's all very personalized. I mean, obviously it's personalized because it's a custom piece, but I feel like because you're able to have your creative process going on as well. And yeah, I guess Leah's question, are there any particular brands you look up to? I love this question. There is one brand in particular that I found and I saw it, I was like, I could actually do this. It very much inspired me. So I'm gonna write it down, but it's called Tunnel Vision. They have more recently expanded to actually um, selling new product, which I obviously am not a fan of, <laughs> but um, before they were a huge online, just all thrift store. And it's, I think something about their line it's like for the freaks or something like that. It's very much Dolls Kill vibes, but it's all secondhand and vintage. And it is absolutely the brand that I look up to the most. Nice, I love that brand. That brand used to be super popular um, when I was in high school. Um, I guess shifting back to the consumer then, what's the first step a consumer can take to having a more, just more eco-friendly shopping habits? So the first thing is the most sustainable item you can buy is the one already in your closet, already in your home. If you don't need anything new, you don't buy anything new. <laughs> you know, just because I think the worst thing people can do is be like, oh, I want to have a sustainable lifestyle. Let me throw away all my non-sustainable stuff and buy all these new things from sustainable brands type deal. And that is the worst thing that you can do um, because that's creating more waste and defeats the purpose. So uh, I say use what you have and then slowly make conscious choices to buy things that are going to last. Just for a small example, um, once you use your last disposable razor, buy a safety razor that is from a good company like Net Zero or something that you can then reuse and it'll last for your wardrobe. Um, first, use what you have, upcycle, mend your own clothes, paint on your own clothes, have me paint on your own clothes. <laughs> um, then 
swap, borrow for events. If you really need that new special dress or suit, rent it. Um, really try to avoid purchasing. But then after that, I recommend secondhand or upcycled clothing. Tons of people do this online if you don't want to shop in a thrift store. And then after that's where I recommend um, that you get like recycled clothing, like Parade does underwear. You're not going to go to a thrift store and get underwear. You can go online and get vintage underwear. That's a good option as well. But <laughs> Parade has good underwear made out of recycled materials. And then kind of so on, a pyramid of recycled at the top, use what you have at the bottom. In my opinion, that's how to be the most sustainable. And same goes for furniture and uh, most items in your home, really. Awesome. So since clothing that is, I guess, considered sustainable, it is, does tend to be more expensive. Do you have any advice for teenagers or younger people wanting to buy more sustainable clothing but not be able to afford it? I've seen a lot of like controversy, especially on like TikTok, where a lot of people would show like what they got from Sheen, but like not everybody can afford like super expensive clothing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is, um, I know it's harder as specifically a teenager because you're wanting to fit in with your friends and fit in with what's going on in your town and high school and that's more important. But I think the underlining lying big thing about that is like, why do you constantly need to be buying new clothes for new trends? I think that's what has to be, that overconsumption is what has to go first. But if your price point is sheen, the exact same price point is thrift stores. And so if you're looking for that big haul, go there. Another thing is if you are 18 and there's some mean people in your town, I recommend going a town over to go thrifting because nothing hurts more than that mean girl being like, that's my top. You got that from Goodwill, didn't you? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just my one recommendation. If your price point is fast fashion, go thrifting instead. Oh, that's a good, that's a good way to start out. And shifting to more businessy, um, just like any general tips or advice for someone wanting to start a sustainable or eco-friendly clothing brand that has literally no idea where to start. So I think my biggest tip, the easiest thing you can do is make your shipping carbon neutral. It is like cents to do. And you can also have your customer pay for it if you want. I think if you're reselling, great to start out on a platform like Etsy, Depop, Mercari, Poshmark to sell your clothes, to kind of like make money and get that base to then open your shop. I started by selling clothes I had in my closet. I was going to donate on Instagram and use that money to buy thrifted clothes, then use the money from selling those to buy thrifted clothes to upcycle, and then eventually that money to open my site. So I think that's a really easy way to kind of build is to smart start small unless you have some capital <laughs> to invest into your business. But I think that's the biggest one. And doing tons of research, tons of research and being careful with you what you buy. It's not really that hard to be zero waste. It's a shame that more brands aren't because if you're careful about what you do, it's not that hard. Just to wrap up, how do you see your brand expanding and do you have any plans to expand your team beyond you in 2021? So I'm not sure about 2021. Um, in 2021, I will be graduating college and I will, I would love to not go into the workforce and to do my business full time <laughs> instead, but I don't foresee that happening. So I'll have to get, find a job and find a place to live. And then my hope after that is I'll have a studio that I, in 2022, that I can stay in and expand and grow product. Um, the big thing I'm moving into is recycled materials so that not all of my items are one of a kind because 
finding an item that's one of a kind that's also in your size is kind of hard. So I want to start blending the two a little bit more, more recycled materials so that more people have the same options. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure having you. I really appreciate like everything you do. And I'm sure everyone here is on the same boat as well. We definitely need to have more brands like yourself and I'm excited as you expand and yeah, good luck with your last semester of college as well. It's very exciting. And thank you. Big thank you to everyone that has pulled through today. And especially I see a couple of names like you've been here all day. So shout out to y'all and thank you again. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. So sorry. It was a little late. <laughs> no worries. Thank you again. Have a good one. You too. Bye.